I did it. I hit my goal of selling $4,000 in a single month on Poshmark, eBay, and Macari. And today I'm going to be sharing all of the details. I'll share some tips and tricks that I use to hit this goal. We'll be talking about the brands that have been selling the most on all of these platforms, the styles that you should be looking out for, items that flopped and that I even lost money on, and I'll be breaking down all of the income how much I actually ended up making in profit. So like with all my other income reselling reports, we're going to start off with the five items. I think today I have seven, but these are the items that made me the most profit for the month of December. Then we'll talk about the ones that made me the least profit, just so you know what to avoid. Then we'll move into fast and slow selling items, and we'll end with breaking down all the numbers. The first item that we're going to talk about is this Patagonia Cinchilla Astic Print Pullover Fleece Sweater. This took one day to sell. It ended up selling on eBay for $134. After shipping and all the fees and everything, my final profit was $99.77. I have here that I paid $6.48, but that is an average cost of goods. I do remember that this was a little bit more pricey. It was more like $12 to $13, and I was debating whether to pick it up or not. I know Patagonia is a good brand to look out for, but I've never sold it before, so I didn't know actually how much it was going to sell for. But after doing a few comps on Poshmark and eBay, I realized that it was probably a good idea to pick it up. The print was nice and it was just also in the season because it was like a warm sweater and it didn't disappoint. It ended up doing really well and it got a lot of attention real quick on Poshmark and on eBay. People were sending offers and I'm glad that I waited out for this one because I think the previous ones were like in the 70s. So that worked out. The next high profit sale was these pair of Nike Jordan swoosh lace up sneakers. They sold in eight days for $76. I didn't pay anything for them and my final profit was $65.90. The reason why I put zero cost of goods is because I actually bought these for myself. I bought them from a viewer on Poshmark. She messaged me on Poshmark and talked about how she saw me on YouTube, watched my videos and all of that. I went to go check out her closet. I like these shoes. They were of five and a half youth. Normally that does fit me well, but these were a little bit tight. I did use them a few times, but I didn't see myself reaching for them often and they were a little bit tight. So I decided to resell them and they actually sold for more than what I bought them for. Moving on to the third high profit sale. It was this Michael Kors Sophia large leather tote bag. It sold on Poshmark in 11 days. For $150, I paid $60 and the profit was $60 as well. The reason why the profit and the cost of goods is the same is because this is a consignment item. I talked about this in my previous video. My cousin has been giving me lots of things to resell for her and the deal was we'd go half and half on the profit. So once I know how much it sells for and I get the final earnings, I just divide that in half and I put her part of the earnings in my cost of goods section on my spreadsheet. The next sale is these Nike Air Max Platinum Women's Running Shoes. They sold in three days. I paid $5.20 for them and they sold for $82.11. After shipping and the platform fee, my final profit was $58. So these pair of shoes came from someone who gave me a big black bag full of things to resell. I looked through that bag, I put things that I didn't wanna sell off to the side that I will be donating, and the rest, I just kind of calculated how much I think I'd make off of each item, and I ended up giving her $100 for everything. So my cost of goods after dividing everything was $5.20 per item from that bag. And some of the other things have also been selling, the things that I decided to keep and list, which we'll talk about later in the video. But the next item that sold for high profit was this Lacoste Red Quarter Sip Vintage Puffer Jacket. It sold on Mercari in 12 days. It sold for $68. I paid $6.18 for it, so after fees, 
my final profit was $52.75. So the actual cost of goods for this was $12 to $13. This is a brand that I've never sold before, but the fact that it was a puffer jacket, the color was bright and beautiful, it was in great condition, that's why I decided to pay up for it and just go ahead and give it a try. After doing comps, it just seemed that it was all over the place. I didn't know what to go with. I ended up listing it for $95. But on Mercari, you can set your price to slowly drop over time. And so that's what happened. In the end, someone sent me the $68 offer and I accepted it. Usually I talk about only five high profit items, but this time I'm gonna throw in two extra just because there were so many sales this month. So this next one, it was these pair of Kate Spade Keds glitter shoes. They sold in three days on Mercari for $60. I paid $6.18 and my final profit was $45.78. I've talked about this before, but Keds is not a brand that is particularly good. You shouldn't bring home everything you see from Keds because most of it sits for a long time and it doesn't sell for that much. But when it's this Kate Spade collabs, they do really good. And so that's why I brought these shoes home along with the size. It was excellent in the condition. They were in like new condition. Next is this pair of boots. I don't know how to say this name, but I'll put it up here so that you can see. These pair of boots sold on Poshmark in nine days for $57. I paid $6.18 average cost of goods. And my final profit was $39.42. This was my second time finding this brand and both times they've sold pretty good and pretty fast and both times the people who bought them left like super positive reviews. Not just the generic thank you for the fast shipping or I love the shoes. No, they're like I think these shoes were meant for me. They are perfect for what I need them for. It seems like people just really love these shoes and they're so easy to spot because of the label. It's this gold plate and so I'll continue to look out for this brand and pick it up when it's a good price and good condition because it does so well. Even though I had a good month and everything was good, there was a lot of low profit sales in there and so I'm going to share five of them with you so that you can avoid them when possible. The first one is this picture frame. It sold in 157 days. I paid $4.66 for it and my profit was a loss. I lost 56 cents. There was a time when my son was doing acrylic paintings and so he needed just blank picture frames. So when I was out thrifting, I would go to that section to find some for him. I saw this one there and I thought, oh, maybe I can try to sell this. Start learning about home goods and home decor to add that to the things I sell. But I did not like it at all. I didn't like listing this because I know nothing about it. I could barely keep up with clothes trends and clothes keywords that you need to use and brands and fashion and all of that. This would be like adding a whole new thing into what I do and I didn't like it at all. I just don't enjoy listing this kind of things. So I'm just more comfortable with clothing now that I've learned so much about it. So I think I won't be doing this again unless it's something that I get for free or something that I'm selling around my home from around my home. I don't see myself picking up home decor to resell because I don't know anything about it and I don't want to learn about it either. The second uh, low profit sale was this Fabletics adjustable racer bag tank top. It sold in 147 days for $10. I paid $4.50, so my final profit was $2.55. Closer towards the beginning of my reselling journey, some of my high sales were Fabletics. I was selling leggings for $20 to $25, the vest for around that price as well. So that left an impression on me that Fabletics was a good brand to pick up. So I'd been picking up everything and anything by Fabletics as long as it was in good condition. But now I'm starting to see that that brand has fallen a lot. It doesn't do as good as it used to. Not only that, it's super expensive at the thrift stores compared to other things. So I won't be picking up Fabletics as much anymore, especially these lightweight tank tops. The only way I will pick it up again is if the print is, you know, a super amazing unique print, the size is good, and it's priced reasonably. Next low profit item this month was this Levi's men's Sherpa lined hooded military jacket. It sold in one day for $20. 
I paid $10.77 for it and my final profit was $2.77. The reason why the cost of goods is so high for this jacket is because it came from a Jamar wholesale box. This was supposed to be a men's outerwear box, but not only were there women's stuff mixed in there, it also took over two months to get here. Maybe two months in a couple of days, but still, it took a very long time. And once I got it, it's not what I expected, and there was a lot of flaws on the items. My experience with Jamar started off good, it started off decent, but by the third box, I really don't see myself ordering from them again. I just don't like the fact that they send you things that are flawed. I hate listing flawed things. This jacket did have a rip under the armpit. If not, it would have sold for more than that. And that's the case with this next low profit sale as well. It was this Urban Outfitters retro crop jacket. It sold in 26 days for $26.30 on eBay after shipping and fees. My final profit was $4.21 and I paid $9.65 for this one. I'm surprised this ended up selling for what it did. I expected it to sell for like $12 or less because of all the flaws that it had on it. I like listing things that I'm excited to list. When I go to the thrift store and I choose my own things, I make sure things don't have flaws and I know it's brands that are going to sell for good amounts, I'm happy to sell it. But when I get things from Jamar and they have ribs and stuff, I list it because I have to, to try to make my money back. But it's a drag to list these things. I'm not happy to list it. So that's why I won't be ordering from Jamar again. And I may make a video on that. The next low profit item was the Simply Southern Black Fleece Pullover fuzzy sweater. It sold the day that I listed it. It sold for $16 on Poshmark. I paid $6.48 average cost of goods and so my final profit was $6.32. Lately when I go thrifting I really try not to do as many comps as I used to just because it's so time consuming and I need to make it back home as soon as possible either because someone's watching my kids and I need to be back or because I need to come to pick them up from school. So I focus on items that I know will sell and I'll only do comps if the item is too pricey for me to take a risk. This one was only two to three dollars actual cost of goods so I didn't even bother doing comps because I thought it's a good style. I've seen this brand on Poshmark parties so I knew that I would at least make my money back. So in the end I ended up making my money back but I also learned that this brand does not bring in that much it doesn't sell for that much so next time I'll either not pick it up or do specific comps on the style that I find now let's move on to some better news five sales that sold really fast the first one sold on eBay it was this Kimberly cashmere blend cow neck cable knit midi dress it sold in one day for $34.13 after shipping and fees, I ended up keeping $12.82. This brand I know nothing about. I just saw the style and I liked it. And then I looked at the material tag and saw that it had cashmere in it. That's normally what my strategy is. As I told you, I need to be in and out of that thrift store. So I'll just look for brands that I know. And if I see a style that I like, I'll look at the material tag. And if it's something good, then I'm more likely to bring it home without doing comps. The next thing to sell was this black leather button front jacket by a brand called Oscar Piel. And it sold in one day for $25. I paid $5.20 for it and my final profit was $14.80. So this jacket also came from that big black bag that I paid $100 for. In that bag, there were so many things, little lightweight shirts. And in the past, I would list all of that stuff as long as it was in good condition. The brand didn't matter because as long as I made 2 to $3 profit, it was still some profit. But nowadays, I'm in a stage where I'm picking and choosing very carefully what I decide to list. I'm taking more into consideration opportunity cost. Meaning, if I sit there and try to list everything just so that I can make some money off of it, I'm taking time away from listing other things that will be bring me more like 10, 20, $30 profit. If you're in the beginning of your reselling journey, that may be okay for you to list things that are gonna bring any and all profit just because you're barely getting started, because you wanna keep your, 
your investments low and because it's a chance to practice practice listing learning keywords shipping and all of that but there must come a time when you start taking opportunity costs into consideration and start focusing your attention on things that are going to give you more bang for your buck but moving along the next uh fast selling item was this hurley collared men's long black pea coat it sold in one day for $25. My profit was $16.74. I don't know anything about this brand, but it was a men's jacket, it looked good, and the graphic inside was pretty unique, so I decided to pick it up because I don't have that much men's stuff in my closet. And in the end, a woman ended up buying it. I try to message buyers whenever I can after they make a purchase just to thank them for the sale and I tell them that I'll have the item shipped as soon as I can. Oftentimes that strikes up a conversation with them and so she wrote back saying thank you. Um, I know this is a men's jacket but I'm hoping that it'll fit me well. So I thought that was funny. I bought it because I don't have many men's items but a woman ended up buying it instead. This next item is this lamb large checkered tote handbag. It sold in one day for $60. I paid 24 and my profit was 24. And again, this is because it was a consignment item. Usually whenever I bring things home from my cousin, I go to her house and we choose the things that I think will sell. This is one of the bags we chose that day. But once I get home, I look over the items more carefully and I decide whether I want to list it or not. Sometimes the items are not in that good of a condition or after doing comps, I see uh, it's probably not worth my time. This bag, I decided it wasn't worth my time to list because the leather was very cracked. But one day I was at the thrift store waiting in line for them to open. I was looking over brands on Poshmark. That's usually what I do while I'm waiting, some brand research. And I saw this brand. I saw that this brand was in their designer party. So I decided to give it a try after all. And I'm glad that I did because it ended up selling for a decent amount. Next up is this pair of boots by Donald J. Pliner. They were listed for one day and they sold on Macari for $45. I paid $5.20 for them and my final profit was $33.70. I like picking up this brand. Normally it sells anywhere from $25 to $27, but these boots, they were a good size and they were chunky and in good style, so they ended up selling for more. But yes, this brand, I really like it. I like when I find it and it's in good condition. And it's a brand that most thrift stores don't price up, so that's good. Now let's talk about some things that took way too long to sell. The first is this pair of Tom's boots. They were girl fur line boots. They took 328 days to sell. They sold for $20. I paid $8.50 for them and my final profit was $7.50. I don't know why these boots took so long to sell. Toms do decent most of the time. I do pick them up very often. These were like in new condition. I'm not sure if this style just doesn't do well. But the next uh, item that took way too long to sell were these Kombu black suede leather boots. They were listed for 327 days. They sold for $12. I paid $3 for these and my final profit was $6.05. When I bought these, I also bought the same pair and they were brown. Those sold really quickly, but for some reason, these sat forever. I use Poshmark's new tool to get rid of this. It's called the My, what is it, My Shoppers tool. So you basically can go on there and message your previous buyers and people who've liked your stuff all at once. So that's what I did the other day. I sent them a message saying that everything in my store was 50% off as long as they bought two or more items. So that's how I ended up getting rid of these. And she bundled it with this pink shirt that was like holiday looking. We're almost over the holidays, so I was so glad to see these two things go. And now when I see this brand at the thrift store, I just go right past it. The next low selling item was these pair of Hudson Byron straight jeans. They sold in 208 days. I paid $5 for them at a Plato's closet and my final profit was $11.90. When I picked these up, I didn't realize they were men's jeans, but I should have because of the style name. 
they were in the uh, women's section but i think men's jeans uh, size 28 is pretty small and smaller sizes tend to sit a little bit longer so i think that's why these sat for a while but what sucks is that the guy who bought them was not happy with them. He asked me a ton of questions. He asked me about the inseam. He asked me something about the stitching. I answered everything I could. But when he ended up receiving them, I guess they were too tight for him. And he ended up leaving me a four star. And he wasn't happy. And that sucks when people aren't happy with what they bought. The next low selling item is this pair of Lucky Brand Sweet Crop Ankle Jeans. They sold in 191 days and they sold for $22.50 in a bundle. I paid $4 for them and my final profit was $14. Lucky Brand used to be one of my favorite kind of jeans to pick up but as time goes on they sell more and more slowly. And not only that, most of the time they're priced for like $8 at the thrift store so it really isn't worth it most of the time. I'll still pick them up if it's like a super unique style, if it's high rise, and if the price is good. But I'm just extremely cautious with Lucky Brand now. The last low selling item we'll talk about is this New With Tags Ralph Lauren Linen summer dress it was listed for 163 days it sold for $27.97 i paid four dollars and fifty cents for it and my final profit was thirteen dollars and ninety cents i listed this in the summer and i bought it because it was new with tags and because it was linen but it just didn't sell all summer and maybe i could have waited and relisted this dress when summer rolls around again and it would have sold for a little bit more but the profit was still decent so I decided to take that offer when it came in and get rid of it now. So those were some of the good and bad sales. Now we're going to talk about some of the top selling brands of the month. The first top selling brand was Michael Kors. It was a total of seven Michael Kors items that I sold in the month of December. And that is because of all the consignment items. Most of the things my cousin gives me are purses and wallets by Michael Kors. So that is why this brand is at the top of the list this month. But normally when I'm out at the thrift store, I pass by most of the Michael Kors stuff. Most of the time it's overpriced at the thrift store and the styles are so simple. There are occasions where I do pick it up. I like picking up flats, I like picking up wedge sandals, heels, but the price must be right and I know that I'm only going to get anywhere from 20 to $25. Some of the outerwear can also do really good. It can sell for 40 and above. But again, most of the time they are priced too high at the thrift store, so I will only pick it up on half off days. The next brand that sold the most in the month of December was Tommy Hilfiger. I've tried a lot of things from this brand. I've tried purses, I've tried dress pants, button up shirts, all of that does not do good at all. It sits for a long time or ends up selling for too low of an amount. What does do good in this brand are the vintage style shoes. So chunky heels, equestrian, tall boots, even kids items have been doing good by this brand. The duck boots, all of those things I'll continue to pick up. They end up selling for anywhere from $20 to $30. And just like Michael Kors, some of their outerwear can do good too. It just has to be priced right and it has to have a lot of unique features. Um, also, a thing that helps with Tommy is if the brand name, the brand logo is in a prominent area where you can clearly see. Next brand is Clark's. I almost wrote off this brand when I started reselling because some of the items that I picked up by them sat for way too long and sold for little amounts. But there's an overabundance of Clark's around these thrift stores in my town. So slowly I've been learning what styles are worth picking up. Clark's has many sub brands. There's the regular Clark's, there's Cloud Steppers, there's Bendables, there's Artisan, and I'm sure many more. Clark's Artisans are the ones that do the best, but I'll pick up the others as well as long as the styles are good. For the regular business casual type shoes that are more for like office jobs, those I can usually get $20 to $25 for. But Oxford shoes, high quality leather boots, those can sell from $30, $35, maybe even $40. Okay, now let's break down the total sales numbers. 
for the month of December, I made a total of $4,095 in sales. The total earnings was $3,187. My cost of goods for everything that sold for the month of December was $1,000. $70. So after the cost of goods, after shipping discounts and everything, my final profit was $2,117. Now if we break that by platform, on Poshmark I made $2,353. On eBay it was $692. And the most surprising thing to me is that on Macari it was $1,000. And $50. I've never made that much in a single month on Mercari. This is the most I've made all year or even since I started. Previous to this, the most I made on Mercari in a single month was $500. So that is a huge jump. And I think that is because I've been listing a lot. I've said this before, but Mercari seems to be the most affected when you list a lot or when you don't list that much. When I start listing less, that platform goes down a bunch. And when I start listing more, that platform seems to go up the fastest as well. In the month of December, I listed a total of 150 items, which is the most I've ever listed in a single month. If we average that, I listed four to five items every day. And that's good, that's decent, but I really want to get to a point where this average daily listing is more like five to seven but i'm slowly making progress there the average cost of goods for everything that sold in december was eight dollars and 29 cents that is a big jump because normally my average cost of goods for the month is like five dollars maybe a little bit above or a little bit below but this time it was all the way up to eight dollars and that is because of the consignment items that i've been listing if a purse sells for a hundred dollars my final earnings will end up being 80 and so i'll take those 80 and divide it in half and i'll put uh, 40 towards the cost of goods which is what i end up paying out to my cousin and then the other 40 i listed as my final profit so that's why that number jumped up so high the total items sold for the month of november was 131 that's an average of four sales a day so i listed the most i've ever listed in a month and i also sold the most amount of items i've ever sold in a month so i guess that kind of proves there's a correlation between how much you list and how much you sell just like my cost of goods went up in the month of december so did my average sale price it was $31.26 and that is because of the consignment items but also because I've been trying to focus on items that are really worth my time. When I go sourcing, my strategy is to skip all the maybes, all the potentially things that could potentially make me a decent profit and just focus on the absolutely's things that I absolutely know will bring back upwards of $25, $30 or more. And so that's my goal going into 2022 to continue to study brands and styles that are worth more money so that I can focus on those so that I could at the very least maintain this average sale price. Because right now it's easy since it's, you know, thicker out of wear boots and things like that. But once summer comes around, this average sale price is gonna be a bit harder to maintain if I'm not focusing on those items that are worth more. Another goal that I have in 2022 is to be more consistent here on YouTube. So if you have any video ideas for me, if there's any video you want me to make, make sure to let me know in the comments below. And also in the comments below, let me know what is one reselling goal you have for the year 2022. Thank you for stopping by my channel. I'll see you next time.